you may remember from a calculus course that it's not so easy to establish whether a function is onto or not. From a function from R to R, we have the horizontal line test, but this requires graphing the function, which can be hard. And for functions from R to R2 and higher, this becomes even more difficult. So how about linear algebra, where we always have transformation from Rn to Rm? Well, fortunately, this is much easier in linear algebra. Once you have the standard matrix, you can see straight away whether a transformation is onto or not, as you will learn in this video. So we have our transformation t from Rn to Rm. We know that t of x can be written using a standard matrix of t at, so t of x equals at times x. And the question is, how can we determine whether t is onto? Using our standard matrix, of course. Well, uh, t is onto if tx is b has at least one solution for all b in its codomain, and the codomain in this case is Rm. So we wonder whether tx is b can always be solved for any b's, for any right hand side. Well, we know tx equals at times x. So we wonder whether the uh, equation uh, a x is b can always be solved for any b in Rm. So we wonder, uh, does the equation ax is equals b as a, uh, has at least a one solution for every b in Rm? So that means that ax equals b can never be inconsistent. So wh when does this happen? When can you never have an inconsistent equation? Well, you can only have inconsistent equations if you have rows of zero in your matrix with something on the right hand side. So an equation becomes never inconsistent if you do not have any rows with zeros in your matrix uh, after reducing it to a Eusechian form. So when does the equation x is b always have at least one solution? Well, if you have no rows of zero, so if every row has a pivot and you want to be able to solve it for any b. So if you have uh, rows with only zeros, you can have inconsistent equ uh, equations. So in that case, you will not be able to solve x is b for any b. So it goes both ways. So the transformation is on two. If you can solve x is b for any b, and it means you need a pivot in every row of your matrix A. So that's a really easy criterion. So let us take some matrix and see whether you have a pivot in every row and that tells you whether your transformation is on 2 or not. So, for example, we have our transformation here from R2 to R2. T of x is given by at times x, where we have our a over here, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we wonder whether the transformation t is on 2. So, we do row reduction, oh, it's only one step. We see our pivots already. We see every row has a pivot. So that means that the corresponding transformation t is on 2. Please never say that the matrix is on 2. Matrix cannot be on 2. The transformation is on 2. Second example, t again from R2 to R2 given by uh, a times x. And now we have a slightly different matrix here. Not 1, 2, 3, 4, but 1, 2, 2, 4. Question, is this transformation on 2? Well, uh, let us do some row reduction again. And there we are. We have a row with only 0, so not every row as a pivot, which means that our transformation will not be on 2. Uh, and you can actually easily spot a b which you cannot reach. If you take, for example, b equals e1, so one in the factor 1, 0, you will see that tx equals this e1 has no solution, which means that the uh, transformation is not on 2. So as you see, uh, determining whether a transformation is on 2 or not in linear algebra is much easier than it is in calculus.